Hello again, Daniel Gilman, Mick Haley with you. Happy to be with you, and I hope everyone had a great Labor Day weekend. This is Six Rotations. We're in the books for another weekend of college volleyball. And as always, we'd like to thank our sponsor in SNA Sports, Better Equipment for a Better Game. Mick, we had a phenomenal midweek section. Stanford, Texas really showed out, and then they matched up on Sunday. And once again, the Longhorns may have won the week in college volleyball. How was your Labor Day weekend, and who were a couple teams that stood out? Well, I watched volleyball from Wednesday on um, and maybe even from Tuesday on, to tell you the truth. I got to see Texas up close, uh, really a lot of offensive firepower. I love Minnesota's offense. I got to watch them twice. Uh, that little pod of uh, USD, uh, Louisville, and uh, um Oh, help Ohio me, Ohio State. State. Yeah. Yes, that 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 threesome just was fantastic to watch them go at each other. And a shout out to Louisville for playing three matches this week: Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. Uh, that that really is special, and they're not that deep to do that. So uh, I'm not sure how that'll affect Danny uh, Kelly's team, but uh, boy, uh, they're fun to watch. How about those aces in that first set? The atmosphere of Diddle over in Bowling Green. Louisville paid it no mind. Then they come back, though. Tough weekend. USD takes care of an Ohio State team that was winless through three. They bounce back to beat Louisville on Sunday. Oh, we've got so much fun to talk about. And then the scheduling. It gets even better. You have Georgia Tech now hosting another three-way tournament coming on this upcoming week. A little bit of Weekend wildness in the ACC as Ohio State will take on another ACC standout. BYU will travel cross country. We've got a ton to talk about for you. Let's take a look, though, at the beginning of our poll. Let's open it up and start with the top five. One and two, not budging, right? Texas balls out in the middle of the week. They head to Palo Alto, a team in Stanford, Mick, that really battled on Tuesday against Florida. Sammy Francis moves to the middle, picks up 12 kills, two errors, nine blocks, looks phenomenal. Kip has 19 kills, Baird with 15, but their switch was flipped on Sunday. What did you see specifically from the Longhorns that impressed you and impressed the coaches to keep them one? Well, I, I think their ability to score is, and they, they don't make a lot of errors right now, and that's really the key early in the season. Their, their errors are very low. Uh, a lot of, you know, norm, normally you get to the end of the season, you want your errors to be three, four, or five, somewhere in that that uh, time frame. But but uh, most of the teams are making about five, six, or seven errors right now, but not Texas. They're not making those errors right now. And they're deep. They can replace anybody, uh, which can be an asset or a liability. So I thought, I thought Texas is going to be real hard to beat here during the season. I mean, real hard to beat. Well, as we look at the rest of this five, the jump occurs with Louisville losing to Ohio State in four sets, a come from behind win for the Buckeyes. They'll stay in the top 10. We'll talk about them in a minute. But Minnesota may be the most impressive full week of anyone because they head down to Austin. First set, a dominant finish for Eggleston and Skinner and company. The second set, UT goes on that 12-5 run. It looks like it's going to be a route, right? Hugh McCutcheon goes cross-country north to south, but Minnesota comes back. Really impressive showing by this new-look team. You've got Shaftmaster maybe tinkering with a 6-2 at times, but I thought Shaftmaster as the one-setter was really, really good. Obviously, the rest of that All-American bunch is returning, but at the same time, you see the newbies, the big swingers. Minnesota goes on a big run, takes the third. They led in the fourth, Mick, and then Eggleston takes advantage. There was a bad service error at 23-21. Eggleston uh, kind of flexes at 24-22 to finish it off and then sweeps Stanford. Minnesota jumps up to three. Georgia Tech stays behind Louisville. This will be the week that we can kind of see what the Jackets are made of, huh? Yeah, I, I like the, the top five. I honestly would put Minnesota two and uh, Nebraska three. I like Minnesota that much because they're going to have some ups and downs during the season because they're running so fast. But once they they play this system under pressure, 
they're going to be hard to beat. They forced Texas into some panic coaching in that fourth set, which was really quite fun to watch because they were coming back after the Longhorns and they, you could just feel if the Longhorns let them get set four, they would win in a, in a five set match. So uh, I, I like, I like Minnesota too, but I don't have any problem with the top five. I think coaches did a good job there. Well, we could open ourselves up. It's only five minutes in and the Nebraska, uh, opening content can can come at us I, I like i like the huskers sitting at two i'll tell you what their sweep of pepperdine is looking better and better now as pepperdine was able to take care of a good top 10 baylor team and as we look at the rest of the top 10 here wisconsin stays right there penciled in at six Pitt jumps up as they get a marquee win a big you know statement victory we'll talk about collier's um team at georgia tech Pitt and louisville we're gonna have our our top three of each conference here at the end of the top 25. So I'm excited to talk about the ACC Fisher with Pittsburgh replacing end day and Lund looking really, really solid here this weekend. Ohio state stays at eight Purdue jumps into the top 10. They stay undefeated. It was a great weekend in West Lafayette. I kind of feel like Ohio state is, is misplaced. Uh, while they had a good win, um, They've only had one. They've lost three. And I really think USD should be in that spot. And Ohio State goes to the, the next five. But that's my only uh, only problem with that second five. I think that's good. We want Wisconsin to play some higher level here to see how really good they are. Uh, so that will be the next thing to look for. Uh, you write about Pittsburgh. And then BYU is going to get tested because they're going to play not at BYU now. They're and gonna, losing at BYU is a big deal for them. So that, we'll see what they're all about. I was going to say, I would maybe swap USD and BYU there just because of the friendly confines. But now we'll get a chance with BYU playing in Atlanta. They'll face Ohio State and Georgia Tech. That could be the toughest weekend that BYU has had in a long, long time. So a real test for Olmstead. How about Purdue? They hit 550 in the first set at home against Utah. Had to battle that. Your, your girl, Maddie Robinson, had 26 kills fourth a fifth set and it was the Iowa transfer and Hannah Clayton who really showed out the middles with 32 kills for the Boilermakers they'll stay undefeated and they will have a good weekend set up coming up had a great time watching the Big Ten Network broadcast there um you know walking me through a couple more of these top 10 teams here let's talk about Pittsburgh okay I want to hear your thoughts before I break down what I thought because I I, I was a little down on Pittsburgh after last week. I'm all the way back in that Pitt can compete for the ACC. Well, Pittsburgh lacks the ability to score on a regular basis from the outside. And I was looking at that very closely. And they have a transfer from Washington State playing out there now uh, that really looked good this week. Didn't look so good last week. Looks much much better this week. But I'm wondering why Pittsburgh doesn't seem to be setting their starting setter. And uh, she hasn't played yet uh, in any of these matches. And do they get better if she comes back? Uh, that's really a question that, that that I'd like to get answered. And maybe we can do some digging on that for next week. But uh, that's the question on Pittsburgh that I have. Yeah, it's Cam Ennis and it's Rachel Fairbanks. And Fairbanks has been so good as an offensive threat as well. She had that triple-double last week. But when you really look at what Pittsburgh's done now, the five-set loss to San Diego is not looking too bad. They avoided that morning scare against Cincinnati on Friday at 9 a.m. local time, beat them in five, and then, of course, beat down on BYU behind the big showing by Vasquez Gomez. Bazaria, what an addition, another Iowa transfer. We talked about Clayton a moment ago with Purdue. Now Courtney Bazario stands up, and she was phenomenal. Double-digit kills for Pitt. And the Panthers are just going to keep on rolling. You know, I'm I'm interested to see as we look. Let me pull up who their next couple matches are against before conference play starts. They have a bit of an off weekend here at home against American, Bowling Green, and Towson. Then they face Tennessee, and then the home match against Ohio State on September 18th. That one's going to be really, really fun. There, there should be the, the big test. You mentioned Ohio State. I'm okay with the coaches leaving them at eight because – the schedule, you have to reward a tough schedule at some point. We'll talk more about that in the late 20s because there's a team at 25 that I'm not sure deserves to stay ranked, but the tough scheduling kind of, you know, sits no, there. I agree at with that. you. That's not, that's not in my 25. We're going to get to that in a minute. Let's look at 10 to 15 or 11 to 15. I should say Stanford, do they deserve to be in your top 10 despite losing to Texas? They did just beat Florida on the road. 
I think Stanford's going to continue to get better. Uh, I'll tell you, they have a, a very athletic setter, one, one of the best ever to play in Southern California. They they have power. They can hit um, the middles. You've got to keep watching there a little bit. Their defense gets better. Their serve-receive has really been the thing that's that's cost them a little bit. They have a chance to really get a lot better. I, I have a feeling that when we rank uh, the conferences, you'll see where I, what I think they're capable of. Yeah, we're going to go a little bit quicker here through the, uh, the the 11 to 25 so we can have more time ranking the conferences. But obviously, you mentioned you thought USD deserved to be there. They'll have the chance to prove themselves here in the next few weeks. And of course, in a very rugged West Coast Conference schedule with BYU and Pepperdine, you have Washington. They played well, took care of Illinois in four, took care of, uh, of Colorado in that Boulder tournament too. Washington's got a great tournament. They'll face Pepperdine and Northwestern this week. I'm excited to be out in Seattle, so we'll have some six rotations coverage out there of Keegan Cook's squad, maybe a little behind the scenes as well as, uh, as I'll be broadcasting those matches on Pac-12 Insider. Uh, Kentucky at 14. How about the Baylor drop? Let's spend a second on this. They dropped a lot to just lose one match to a good team. Well, I think Baylor's still an unknown. I think uh, Baylor can fluctuate five, six places uh, either way, actually. Uh, we we need to see them. The freshman is really good. Uh, she she scores some points for them, but they're not scoring enough points regularly to feel comfortable about moving them up any higher. I like to see what the, what they do against the the rest of the competition and how they fare against Kansas and some of the teams in their own conference. Uh, if they handle those people easily, then I think they're, they're better than I think they are. But, but my feeling right now is they just play well sometimes. Well, they beat Wisconsin and their only loss, you know, aside from that opening weekend, the stumble, you know, against against a really good Minnesota team is now against Pepperdine and they have a chance to prove themselves here in Seattle. The serve receive broke down a bit for Baylor against Pepperdine. They had a balanced attack with Simpson, Talbert and Harrison. And, you know, we talked a lot about Lauren Harrison and what that could bring to the table. I you're right. Let's hold let's hold our judgment here on, on a lot of the Big 12 teams because they're not necessarily having too big of the uh, the troubles that that other conferences may have because at the same time, Baylor will always have the chance to beat Texas and that will change everything. They can kind of control their destiny. Let's take a look at the last or the last couple teams here. We've got Florida with Creighton, Oregon, Kansas staying up there, staying well played, unbeaten as well. They'll have a good matchup against UNLV this weekend. Aside from that, the Gators stayed middle there. They lost to Stanford and Minnesota this week. I'd probably move uh, uh, Kansas and Penn State down to that uh, last group just simply because of their schedule. Uh, I, I think UCLA is trying to get out there and play. Marquette is showing they can play. Uh, Western Kentucky, uh, we have high hopes for, but uh, didn't play very well against no, Louisville. They, they dropped a dug. That's what they did. They dropped yeah, a dug. So, so I, I think, and, and Pepperdine obviously is showing that they can play. Uh, I, yeah, I, I think uh, Kansas, Penn State are the only questions I have in the uh, 8, 19, and 20 group. And we'll have a good matchup. We'll, we'll talk a little bit at the end about our favorite matchups this weekend, but Creighton will have a, a fun one against FSU, which is a, a, a seminal team that has, you know, they've lost a couple games, but they haven't lost a couple matches. They just have one loss on the season. That'll be at Creighton. And I mentioned UNLV against Kansas on Friday as well. There are well, three or four headlining matchups this weekend that we'll talk about in a minute. And and Creighton has Nebraska on Wednesday. Oh, you're right. Yeah, that's that's going to be a big thing because they got smoked at Creighton last year, 3-0 by Nebraska. And I, I think this match is at Nebraska. So Creighton's got to come and show that they can play in front of that big crowd. No, it's actually going to be at, at Creighton. It's, it's in the Chicago oh, it's Health back Center. At Creighton so it's, again? It's, it's in Omaha. But oh, you know good. what? They're going for that record. That's why. Okay. All right. So well, that'll be, be that'll be fun to watch. And I think either I think Creighton also has Omaha uh, on their schedule. And Omaha gave Nebraska fits last year, if you remember early in the season. So uh, I like all those games. I, I follow them. I like to see who's doing what. Yeah, and then, of course, Nebraska's schedule is really going to toughen up. We didn't really talk too much about the Huskers. They went away from Bree Orr. They gave her uh, a little bit of rest, and instead it was a 6-2 with Evans and Hames, and they swept Loyola Marymount. They swept Ole Miss. Ole Miss is a pretty solid team. Made them look uh, 
made him look like a mid-major there. And then good weekends coming up, right? You get Stanford at home in Lincoln at Kentucky. Of course, the matchup at Creighton on Wednesday at on FS1, 5 o'clock local time there, 6 o'clock Eastern time. And then the Big Ten season starts for John Cook's squad. But before we get to our favorite matchups and favorite uh Powers of the conference. Let's talk about the last five. UCLA at 22. They went to Hawaii. They beat Hawaii in five on Sunday at around midnight Eastern time. And uh, I'll tell you what, that, that felt like a must win for Michael Seeley's crew. Yeah, but I think people don't realize how good Robin Moe's team is. You know, they're they're lacking one scorer. They've got a, a young lady on the right side, a freshman, who they've put in there, got 17 kills against Seeley, but but they need left side scoring. If they had just one more attacker on the left side, Hawaii would be back, I think. So I think that was a big win for Sealy in Hawaii. Next week, USC gets to see them twice out there. We'll see how they do. That'll be a good one because USC, as you could mention, and, and you can see right here, they dropped out of the top 25 with their loss on Friday. We talked a little bit about Hawaii last week. I, you know, you got to prove it to me. They, I know they have an, an All-American caliber setter and their middle in IGD is a superstar too. You mentioned Kaylin Alexander on the pin, but aside from that, you need more from Riley Wagner. You, I, you know what? W Westerberg played Akana as well. The the sister of, uh, of, of the new Longhorn player in, in the former Nebraska, but I, we'll see. I'll hold my reservations. You UCSB sh could be the team to be in the big West because they've got a lot of talent coming back. Santa Barbara. That's a team that, uh, you might want to keep an eye on Pepperdine jumps into the top 25. They were at 34 bumped all the way up. And then we mentioned Illinois, not a good weekend swept by Colorado beaten down by Washington. And yet Miami is 26 Mississippi state, 27. Neither of those teams just getting the love from coaches. This was, this was a poll that you could tell was maybe half-assed by a couple of our coaches, huh? Yeah, I, I thought the team that played the best of all those teams there was Utah in their match with Purdue. Okay. And I thought they had shown well earlier. They just got uh, drummed one time, and that kind of put them out of the top 25. But you may have to keep your eye on them. I, I thought they gave Purdue all they wanted. Well, let's talk about our, our favorite conferences. We're going to break down six conferences, the power six here in volleyball. And we're going to go over our top three teams in each conference. Mick, we got to start with the Big Ten. And I'll let you go ahead and you go first. This is a tough one to pick three teams in the Big Ten that are the, the top tier because it's uh, almost all four. right. So you make make sure you get ready for all these calls because I've got Minnesota one, Nebraska two, and Wisconsin three. Okay. Okay. All right. I am also throwing a wrench into things. I've got Nebraska one, Minnesota two, and Ohio State three. I think that the Buckeyes getting that win yesterday, that's gonna do above and beyond to that confidence. And I'm just not necessarily sold on this new look Sheffield team. They've got to prove a little bit more to me to get into that top three, but Devin Robinson, she's still so good, right? On the night that yeah. Nebraska, or excuse me, Wisconsin was able to raise that national championship banner. They had a big comeback, but Marquette put a scare into them. Looked like they were going to take a two to one lead in the third set. Instead it flipped. Robinson had 15 kills at over 450. And yeah, Marquette, they, uh, they, they stayed in the rankings though, right? Sitting, they actually jumped up right from 24 to 23. Um, let's, let's go down into the ACC. I want to, I want to spend some time on the ACC. I was able to be in ACC country this weekend. I broadcasted three Clemson matchups. They lost in five to Jacksonville state, who was a good team. Got to keep an eye out of them in the A sun. They lost in five to the Citadel and CAA tournament competitors. And then they swept uh Gardner Webb, a bad team, but the ACC is going to be fun, right? I'm, I'm going Louisville. Georgia Tech, Pitt. Are you are you following me there? I got Pitt, Louisville, and Georgia Tech. I love it. And, and I'll tell you why. I Pitt Pitt just doesn't seem to fall down. They they've been uh, playing not so good and still winning. Uh, Louisville's not the same without Dilfer and Stevenson. I'll tell you right now. Now Lazaro did a nice job setting. Uh, but but there's not a connection between Lazaro and the middle blocker when they're both in the front row at the same time. And that was so effective with Dilfer and Stevenson. They could get through those rotations when they loaded up on Chance or De Beer. So uh, I just didn't get the same feel from Louisville. So I didn't give them the first nod in the conference. 
So do you know how badly I wanted to put Georgia Tech one? And I wanted to do it. And the coaches, <laughs> they, they kept them behind too. Georgia Tech's still undefeated. This will be the weak test for Georgia Tech. But the reason why I gave it to Louisville, they did lose on Sunday. But beating USD in that tight fourth set and then playing the trumpets that the New York Mets are using for their closer entry, um, where it's like... Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 oh, this bum, is bum, classic. Bum. Yeah, okay, we got this. Yeah, and I loved it, and it got me fired up. I think it's like uh, Timmy Trumpets is the guy's name that that plays the the song. And I was like, okay, for that reason, for now, it's early in the year. I can put Louisville one. I know. Look at me. Uh, there's, it's we're in a heat wave, a historic heat wave out here in Central California. It's 98 degrees, and I've got the fan trying as as loud as I can have it without you guys hearing the fan. I've got it blasting at my face. But yeah, I'm a, I'm a tomato right now. That's a um, cool way of here in in Texas. You know that. Oh, it's 97. a cool way. 97. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, Pac-12 now, speaking of our West Coast. Whew, this was tough. I don't know about you, but I had a tough time with one and two, and then I put Oregon three. So what, what do you got one and two? I got Stanford, Washington, and Oregon. Yeah, I've got Washington, Stanford, and Oregon. I It was something that going into Sunday, I had Stanford one. If they got a set out of Texas at home, I'm keeping them one. But you, you got to get out of there at home with a set, in my opinion. Washington, a lot to prove. If they if they lose to Pepperdine or if they falter some other way before conference play, then I think the power struggle switches. But for now, you got back to back conference champs. Prove it to me that they're not number one in the Pac-12. That's how I feel. And they had seemingly a full house, from what I could determine watching on TV. They had their fans back and. Right. Uh, if they want to keep those fans, that looked to me like they were losing fans either because of the pandemic or other things. But uh, they had a full house for this match with Texas. and uh, But Texas played well. I mean, oh, of course. But still, you know, if you want to be a team that's going to win the Pac-12, you got to show me more. Going on the road to beat Florida, Florida hasn't necessarily proven themselves here in the last, you know, three weeks. But we got a lot we could still kind of figure out with Stanford. Obviously they're going to, they're going to take on a, a great Nebraska team in a, in a week and a half. How about the PAC 12, excuse me, the big 12. Well, I think we we're going to have the same. We all know who one. the first team is. We all know probably Baylor's the second team and who's the third team. Well, I, I, I'll give Ray Bouchard's group out there in Kansas, the third right now, but I want to see what Kansas state comes up with what, uh, uh, TCU comes up with a few others. And don't that sleep on the Red Raiders. Yeah, that I'm just telling one. you, that is a yeah. good team in Texas Tech in Lubbock. Yeah. And they are undefeated right now. They haven't necessarily had, you know, any true tests per se. And I'm gonna I'll pull up their uh their schedule right now to kind of walk through what we'll see. But six and zero at the moment, NCAA tournament bound a season ago, and they beat Notre Dame on opening day. You know, they they beat Georgia in Athens last Saturday. No, no one really too testing, you know, coming up because they'll go to Rice on Sunday. So they're going on the road and then they'll host a tournament with Arizona State, um, you know, Oral Roberts, nothing crazy. So the Big 12 is going to be where it is. And I think Texas Tech came into the season, maybe not having scheduled like they were going to be an at-large team. And that is a little disappointing because they were an at-large team a year ago. The RPI is going to hurt them out of conference. Yeah, I might have I might have put Texas first, Baylor second, and Texas second team third. Uh, that might have been the way I'd, I'd do that conference. All right. SEC, hit me. Florida, Kentucky, and get this, Texas A&M. Oh, uh, I like it. Like A&M's A&M is running really fast. They have Syracuse setter. And, and they, <laughs> this is funny. There are two setters, one from one from Greece and one from Turkey. I, I don't know how this is going to work out, but they have two setters. They've been playing a 5-1. I, I like the the young lady from uh, from Greece that was at Syracuse. Uh, she really runs a nice, fast system. They're running so fast that the kid from uh, the transfer meth from uh, Notre Dame is really yeah, Muth, good out Muth, on the out. Muth is that right? On the outside, she can hammer. And the rookie of the year to look at is a young lady by the name of Led Nikki, a six three left handed freshman that gives you one heck of a, a challenging approach to get your block timing right. She's been very successful in most of their matches, and they count on her for three to four kills per set. Well, I'll tell you what, A&M at Western Kentucky next Friday, the 16th, 
that could be a good chance for your Aggies to prove themselves. Coach Kuhn has a good squad over there. I'm sticking with my guns with Mississippi State. I've got them as my third. Top two is standard, but I do have Kentucky over Florida. Kentucky, Florida, Mississippi State. MSU schedule, not necessarily deserving of of me calling them a snub again. I need them to play someone to jump into that top 25 because they beat Ball State in three, Oklahoma in five in Nashville and swept Lipscomb. This weekend's not going to be it either against Kennesaw State, Houston, and USA. Next week, though, they'll go and play Michigan. That could be that test, as we mentioned, for A&M as well. A&M did beat Hawaii on opening day. And now let's talk about our sixth power team, and that's the West Coast. I think the West Coast Conference could be better than the SEC. They might be better than the Big 12 when all is said and done. For me, USD 1, BYU 2, Pepperdine 3, and it is quite literally a coin flip for all three. I, I, I've got the same thing. And when we rank the conferences one through six, uh, it'll be interesting to see where you put them. There are a couple conferences too that we'll get some love and we'll talk about them here as the weeks roll on. But Mick, let's talk about some of our favorite matchups of this upcoming week. You already teased a few of them, right? Wednesday, we've got Nebraska, Creighton, Texas will host a Big West team in Davis. Then Thursday, how about BYU at Georgia Tech, seven o'clock Eastern on ACC Network. Uh, we got Baylor, Kansas, and Mississippi State all in action on Thursday. Do you have some good ones for Friday for me? Because there are yeah, some great I've got ones. some great ones for Friday. Pepperdine, uh, Washington, one o'clock in the afternoon, actually Central Standard Time. I've got Ohio State BYU at six o'clock Central Standard Time. Wisconsin Kentucky at six o'clock. I'll be flipping back and forth. Oh wait, Purdue and Louisville. I'll be flipping back and forth at that six o'clock. And finally, we get a break, Minnesota versus Oregon at 7.30. So Friday night is jam-packed with some great matches. Yeah, I'll be on the call of that Pepperdine-Washington match on Friday. It'll be free on the Pac-12 Insider site. That'll be good. You mentioned Purdue-Louisville, Florida State-Creighton, UNLV-Kansas, also really good. But I don't know. I think Wisconsin-Kentucky could be the matchup of the weekend. Unfortunately, I don't think Georgia Tech-BYU will be streamed. Some of that, uh, or excuse me, I don't think... uh, Ohio State BYU will be streamed some of that uh nonsense on the on the streaming rights side of things and then Ohio State Georgia Tech on Sunday one o'clock Eastern on ACC Network Extra only one game for you on Saturday in my mind you tell me I like Miami at Central Florida a little bit of a matchup of interstate rivals two teams that could bump into the top 25 here as the season goes on and you know McKenna Melville against our girl Savannah Vox should be a good matchup I I have three on Saturday that I liked uh, to look at. I thought one was uh, we might find out something about Penn State and Oregon when they play uh, on Saturday. Um, We've also got Stanford and Minnesota on Saturday night uh, that I think gives Stanford a chance uh, to play at Minnesota and see what they can do with that. That's going to be really fast off at the pavilion. Yeah, Utah and USD at 9 o'clock Saturday gives Utah a chance to show what they've got. And then the team that uh, I would challenge uh, you about the the Big West, uh, I I think Long Beach State has a chance to sneak in there and challenge Robin Amo uh, in Hawaii for first place in that conference. They're playing Nebraska at 3 o'clock Saturday afternoon. So I I would look at that one myself uh, just to see uh, what uh, the former assistant coach at Long at uh, Nebraska has in store for John Cook when he plays his Long Beach team. Yeah, Tyler, Tyler Hildebrand. Yeah. You know what? We talked about them last week. They put up a big fight against Oregon. We'll keep our eyes on Long Beach, of course. I'll be on uh, the call for them in a couple weeks as they take on Cal Poly, so I'm excited to do some prep for them. Also, some big news, Texas adds beach volleyball, so we'll end the show on some additions to a big program. Happy to kind of stretch out the beach volleyball world. We know they made that bump in the NCAA tournament in terms of teams allowed last year, but that's it. We're going to run things into the weekend. As always, so happy to be a part of your Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon, whenever you're watching. We're happy to be with you for Mick. I'm Daniel. This is Six Rotations.